Everybody, there's a zebra giving birth there. There's a zebra giving birth. This is a zebra giving birth. Oh my God, look at that. There's it comes, it's coming out. Look at that little zebra about to be born. There's the head. Oh, you clever mare, well done. It's born, everyone. It's born and it's alive and it looks fine. I'm going to try and reverse just a little bit, but unfortunately there's a bush behind me. I just don't want to disturb them too much. Look at that. Oh, you clever girl, well done. Oh, this is just too magnificent for words. I've never seen this. In 10 years, I've never seen a live birth before. Get up, you clever thing, come on. That's the amniotic sac you can see there, still inside her. <laughs> I drove straight past the zebra, and Dave said to me, well, hang on, hang on, what's that? And this little thing was sticking out of her. in a special blue bag. Coughing out there, breathing perfectly. This is just epic, everybody. This is just epic. I'd like to move a bit more, but I can't. I'm afraid I've backed right into a redwood tree. Let's just watch carefully, let's watch. Mother is cleaning the little one a little bit. Look. He's gonna try and stand up. Oh, this is just too wonderful. Look at breathing there. See it breathing in the last embers of the light. You can see it breathing. Come on, get all the way out there. Come on, that's it, that's it. How that enormous thing came out of that poor mother. Oh my goodness. There, that's it, that's it, all the way out. I think it's out now. <laughs> and the reason I don't want to move is because I think she will then try and get up. As we went past, she did kind of stand and then lay down again. So I could do a little loop around and just get a better view, but I'm afraid for now we're going to stay right where we are, see what she does. Now she will be sore, of course, obviously, giving birth to something that size, but remember, for these animals, oh, this is the first time I've ever had an opportunity to even talk about this. It's not like birth for a human being, it's much easier than that. And so she will be able to get up fairly soon. That youngster, of course, is going to stand up now. You hear that? Shaking its head, free of the amniotic fluid. Zebras, zebras are not seasonal breeders. They are fairly aseasonal, but there'll be a peak during the wet season. So, I mean, it would be normal for them to be having foals now. And we have seen a few foals around, little ones. But they will peak, they will birth, you know, throughout the year. This is fantastic. I'm going to try and move everyone. I'm going to roll forward. 
then I'm going to just do a little loop around quickly. Dave, we're just going to do a loop around like this. Very slowly so that we can get a proper view. We're not going to get any closer, but we're going to get an easier view. There we go. Now, we're also obviously not going to put a light on the situation here. I just was a little bit close there. I don't want to affect her behavior, obviously. And a little thing like this doesn't need a great big flashlight on it. Oh, look. Isn't that spectacular? And it will struggle to get that amniotic sac off. She looks like she might be about to stand up. She's nudging it to try and make it stand. We've seen lots of foals around, you know, and I think I've probably been overestimating their age. Look at it. Come on, up you get. Up you get, little fella, come on. Before we have to go off there. Hmm. Look at the coordination already. Just born. I mean, it's not 10 minutes old and yet it can shake its head like that. It can move its neck around. But you can see the neurons just firing there. You can see it's, you know, it's kind of shaking around a bit. Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> Dave, how are you feeling? Incredible. <laughs> Now, in theory, within half an hour, that thing will be standing. And I'm so pleased, and I never thought I'd say this, that the Nguhuma Pride is nowhere to be seen. Well, no lions around here at the moment. They're on Simbambili, and I hope they stay there. And as all of you are saying, there's an enormous outpouring of amazement at what is a tender, tender moment out here. And I'd get ragged for it quite often there. She's going to get up. And I talk about the savagery of the wild, but this is just quite the opposite. The tenderness and perfection of motherhood. Look at that. There we go. That's totally normal. She'll wait for the afterbirth, of course. And now she'll help the little one, hopefully, to stand up. Now, Charlie, you want to know if the afterbirth or placenta, look, it's good. come on, stand up. If the afterbirth is going to be eaten by the mother, um, I know, oh, here we go, here we go. Charlie, I think she will probably eat the sack. I'm not sure if she'll eat the entire afterbirth. She may well. Nah, look, he's trying to stand up. I must try and keep my voice down, of course. I don't want to give them a fright. We're not far. We're probably about 30 meters, 100 feet. Look, he's trying. Look. And Gracie, you're age eight, but wise well beyond your years. You say nature took away a zebra from us the other day and gave us another one today. Hmm. Oh, look. Come on up, you get the little thing. Yep, yep. Mm, Ellie. <laughs> look. That's it. That's it. That's it. mum cleaning him cleaning him off and I think that apart from the has an important important function in making sure that the zebra doesn't smell bad so that it starts to smell clean almost immediately because obviously that kind of amniotic fluid will have a distinctive smell that might attract a predator and so she will make sure to get rid of that smell and she looks like she might be even having a go at the am amniotic fluid now 
just trying to remove it from herself. You can see the bag is still inside her there. And that will be attached to the placenta, which I think, I don't think in a zebra it's reabsorbed. I'm pretty sure that it will come out. There you go. Oh, it's so hard. Of course, it's next. There, 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 there. Come on. Don't trip on your baby. It's completely unlike an elephant, of course, but it never gets anywhere close to tripping on a youngster. Dave, I'm going to try and sneak a little bit forward. Everybody, we are, it's almost dark out here. We're pushing the camera to its limit, or we're at full, full, full gain there, Dave. Yeah. So I'm afraid this is as bright as it's going to get. Yeah. It's the best view we're going to get of the little one, I'm afraid. Oh, this is too awesome. Draw, you're on YouTube, you want to know if she's stimulating the baby with licking. I don't, you know, I'm, I know so little about this, and I think we probably all do. I'm sure there's an element of stimulation. I'm sure there's an element of the baby now bonding with the mother. That's it, come on, up you get, little thing. Bonding with it, probably imprinting the stripe pattern or imprinting the scent. Oh, yes, yes, it's so close. Or imprinting this, you know, the smell, and there'll be an element of, I think, just cleaning to get rid of the scent. They'll walk away from here as soon as that little one can get up. Look how small it is. It's so tiny. Oh, that's it. Oh. Look. Lisa, roll on me. You want to know if there's any truth to the rumor that animals do eat the afterbirth so as not to attract predators? I think absolutely. I also think that it's in a major nutritional cost to give birth to an afterbirth, and to waste that nutrition yeah, would be silly. So there are two major reasons, especially for a herbivore like this. You can see the neurons firing in that little thing's brain, telling its muscles, you are strong enough, get up. You can see she's not trying to help it get up. But it's getting stronger. Every single time it tries, a new neural net pathway is created and it gets closer to getting up. Come on. Please get up before we have to leave you. Cat in Tampa, you make an interesting observation, which is not entirely, oh, not entirely accurate. You say that the rest of the zebras moved away, and interesting that they're coming back now that she's given birth. Cat, they were all around this one lying down when we drove up here. We were, I mean, look where the road is. You can see where the road is. We were so close to her, and they moved off. Oh, look, it's so close. And now they are moving back. You're absolutely right. Not sure how protective they would be. I know zebras are not particularly protective, really. We did have that horrible incident. Oh, look at that. Come on, little thing, up you get. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> As you say, Zoe, Dave sure has been baptized in the Wild Earth experience. Dave doesn't know what it's like to take a quiet drive. Well, one or two. That's it. That's it. I think I'm getting overexcited. You take your time, little thing. Well, not too much time. Do it before it gets dark, please. So Dave and I can, with our naked eyes, we can hardly see that at all. It's just a kind of um, blob. The camera is, the camera is blowing out the outline, of course. I'm sorely tempted to turn on the sidelight, but I'm not going to. 
I'd, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't have any effect, but I'm still not going to do it, just in case. It's so close. Oh! Come on! And the effort to do that takes a human how long? 12 months. How long have we been here, Dave? About 20 minutes. Thank you, Annie. You say I, I make an excellent midwife. I'm not sure that I agree, maybe. Thank you, Annie. Come on, get up, little thing. Up you get. Oh, too tired. This is totally normal. There's nothing wrong with that baby. In case anybody's a young viewer, perhaps, um, in case you're worried that this is there's something wrong with the youngster, there's nothing wrong with it. It's totally normal, and it will get up. It's, it's only been born now for about 20 minutes. They're normally up sort of about half an hour. You can see how close. Each time it gets a little bit closer to standing up. I'm just not sure we're going to be able to see it, unfortunately. Dave, that's, um, <laughs> that's about the best we can do, isn't it? Well, we've got 15 minutes to sit here, everybody. Um, well, we might be able to keep you posted as it happens, but I, I don't know. I can't even see anything anymore there. I'll tell you what, let's just move a little bit forward. There may be a little bit of light at a slightly different angle coming from the last embers of the day. It's, oh, it was nearly got up there. It's so nearly got up. There, Dave, I don't know if there's any more light in there at all. I can't see anything for the glare of this thing in my face. It is a bit better, then. Is that a bit better? I can just, I mean, I can see a small shape there. She is now, she started eating the sac. She started to eat the amniotic sac. You can't really see that, but that's what she's doing. I'm just going to narrate this to you, I'm afraid, everyone. I can just see the little one. It's kind of, it's still trying, but it's obviously quite tired now. Uh, she's now eating the sack. There, oh, it's nearly got up. Still on the front, oh, yeah, no. I think it's gonna take another 15 minutes or so before this little thing stands. It's still those jerky, neurological, jerky kind of neurological movements. Those nerves are firing. The muscles are clenching. If only there was a moon, that would be very helpful. It's trying, it's trying. Still just the front end up. Still not the back end yet. Ah, just amazing. Oh, nearly, 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 nearly. No, not quite. I, I know you can't see anything now. It's just darkness. All right, let's go back to Scott. If, if this little thing stands up, we'll pull you straight back across.